if I'd given a lecture in this room 20 years ago, and somebody had raised their hand and said, could we ever reduce homicide uh, by 82% without changing the nature of the population or the basic social institutions? I would have assured people that the answer to that question was no, but I would have been wrong. Well, it turns out that offenders aren't that persistent. And it turns out that if you stop a robbery on Tuesday, that's one less robbery in the city that year. Uh, the, the terms that I use in the book is that crime turns out to be more situational and contingent. And that's why cops can matter. What we're going to do here in Chicago is we're not only going to have that intelligent policing, we're not only going to have the quality of life enforcement, we're not only going to have the systematic elimination of narcotics markets, which is different than the war on drugs that we've been doing in this country since God knows when, but elimination of individual narcotics markets to improve quality of life and decrease crime in the neighborhoods where, where they're subject to that. All of those things are going to be back-ended with social services and programs to help stop the regression after the crime initiatives. Putting the penalties on the people most likely to be violent will reduce crime, but also can result in reduced incarceration. I do think we can also change behavior, and one of the things we've done in the parolee forums, working with the police department and federal authorities, is to let people know in a non, um, not a Kojak way that they're being talked at, but as Tracy Murick says, talk to, that they have choices, and if you provide people warning that as felons, if they recommit, they're going to jail for a long time, and there are people who provide job alternatives, which I think is a key part of uh, what we have to address is the reentry of felons into a society where there are not enough jobs. If we can provide alternatives, I think we can reduce um, uh, reoffending. Realizing that people that come into our system are broken in many respects. They've got drug issues. 85% of the people that come in county jail have some evidence of illegal drugs in their system. Um, and large numbers have mental health issues as well as drug issues. And these are what we have been addressing. And I will tell you, and, and things you really don't hear in the papers, but we have 19 problem-solving courts in Chicago in conjunction with the state's attorneys, the public defenders, and the sheriff. There's an awful lot of good things going on. But we also have to have a recognition that while we're tasked with reducing crime, the criminal justice system, which is evident in the prosecutors and the police and the jails and so on and so forth, the fact is we don't control the factors that create crime in the first place. Poverty, education, the breakup of the family unit, you name it. It comes and it comes and it comes. So it's with that mindset that we're looking to, as I call it, back-end our crime initiatives by bringing our partners to the table who are most likely to be able to fill those voids and help us prevent reoccurrence of crime.